injuries, and maybe we might come back to that later, talk a little more about Guriel, who uh, he had a home run last night, which was the first time in four games that he had a home run. He went four straight games without hitting a home run, which is it's absolutely ridiculous. That's a huge slump for a guy who's hit a home run every day, and obviously I'm kidding, but he continues his hot tear. Now has an OPS of over 1,000 for the season, over 1,000 for the totality of the season, which is ridiculous to suggest considering how poor he started. Uh, but I think we might, if we have time, we'll sort of go back into that later. And what I was going to say was, since the offense had such a great time, one part of the Blue Jays roster that was not so impressive over this past week was the rotation. And it starts with Trent Thornton, who was sort of a source of stability for the Blue Jays for the majority of the year. And he had been pitching really well over the last few starts, but he started on Tuesday against the Red Sox. He only lasted two and two-thirds innings, gave up 11 hits, seven earned runs, struck out just one batter, and this is coming off another horrid outing. Back on June 26th against the Yankees, he only went three and a third innings pitched, gave up seven hits and five runs. So last few starts have been really rough on Trent Thornton. The competition is obviously very good. The Yankees and the Red Sox, two of the best teams in the league, and I thought it was really unfortunate when I looked at his um, his starts, the starts that he was going to make. He just missed Kansas City, and he was going to start against Boston. So back-to-back starts against the Yankees and the Red Sox, that's got to be tough. But uh, those are two really concerning starts, I would think, because uh, he wasn't even he wasn't even competent in either of those starts. He, was just, he didn't even last the fourth inning in either. And then, of course, our favorite topic, Aaron Sanchez, He's in free fall mode. He had another rough start on Sunday against the Royals. He's just he just completely lost all faith and everything. He's just not pitching well. And Marcus Stroman, who we'll talk about in a bit, he only lasted just four innings with that pectoral strain or pectoral injury, I should say. I shouldn't specify what part of it because we don't know yet. And now the Blue Jays are really shorthanding the rotation with Stroman's injury. We mentioned he's not starting tonight. And yesterday they sort of went to a last resort. They had David Phelps as the opener, and then Jacob Wagespak came in and pitched five innings, had a decent outing, pretty good outing considering the expectations and the fact that he was facing the Red Sox, but the rotation looks like a real concern right now, and that just raises the question. They're going to need guys to make starts for them for the rest of the season, and if Stroman's traded, and even Sanchez for that matter, what's the next step? Because the rotation depth looks super thin. Yeah, um, you saw the Blue Jays went for the opener, and they're going to be going with the opener tonight. Thomas Pannone will not be starting tonight. Derek Law will be starting the first inning for the Blue Jays. Then Thomas Pannone will be starting um, the second inning onwards. Uh, we'll look to He will look to um, quack down the Red Sox bats. But we've seen the pattern of the opener for the Blue Jays. They used it yesterday, I believe. Um, and they used it. they're going to be using it today. And like you said, if Trent Thornton starts um, to struggle as of late, which I don't believe he will... Everyone has um, some bumps in the road, and Trent Thornton, um, I believe he will bounce back. But if Aaron Sanchez continues to slump, if uh, Marcus Stroman, uh, will, who will most likely be traded at the deadline, July 31st, he gets traded, there isn't much depth for the Blue Jays. You have the argument that Sean Reed Foley can come up. Sure, he's serviceable, but he still has those command issues. TJ Zoic, that's one of those guys that I wanted to mention about to you. Um, he had another solid start at Buffalo, and I believe he went six innings, even have two earned runs. That's three straight solid starting from former first round pick, and I believe he should be the first guy called up by the Blue Jays to take these starts. Jordan Romano is a guy that the Blue Jays could count on to get these starts, but I feel like if Ken Giles is traded, they would want Jordan Romano to slide into that closet role. But like you said, I've also seen some takes on Twitter from the Blue Jays' um, Twitters and all these fan pages and all these just Blue Jays fans. They've been asking, oh, let's send Aaron Sanchez down. He doesn't know how to pitch. But there isn't really an option to send Aaron Sanchez down because there's no one who can fill his void right now. And even though he's slumping right now, um, it's better. It's best just to leave him out there and try to figure it out. And also, I have an uh, idea for Aaron Sanchez. I believe he should be the first guy. Um, the opener. We should use the opener for Aaron, in Aaron Sanchez's starts and have say a David Phelps come in the first inning and then have Aaron Sanchez dialed in from the second inning onwards. Because I believe it was the third time through the art order where the OPS jumped over a thousand. 
when batters facing Aaron Sanchez. And I believe if he came in the second inning, that could possibly eliminate the fact that he has to face the third time through the order. Maybe go, maybe he goes through to, uh, the second inning to the sixth inning, and then he should dial in. But yeah, sending Aaron Sanchez is not an option. And TJ Zoic, Jordan Romano, and Sean Reed Foley should be the guys up when those guys are traded. And one last point, uh, Ken Rosenthal treated, tweeted last uh, yesterday around this time. He said, Aaron Sanchez watch. Next start is Friday. Last day for Blue Jays to option him to minors is Sunday. Reaches five-year service and gains right to reject any assignment on Monday. And then he said five plus players hardly ever agree to be option. They generally either stay in the majors or get DFA'd. That's actually very interesting, that last point you mentioned. So the Blue Jays are going to send Aaron Sanchez down. They better do it quick, in other words. But I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I don't think sending down Aaron Sanchez is the is like the answer to the problem. I think when you're pitching for five years right now, which is five years officially on uh, Monday, you said. Yeah. Uh, you you pretty much know the ebbs and flows of a major league right now. You're not a rookie anymore. You're not a guy who's learning how to pitch. You got to iron your stuff out in the big league level because you're a big league pitcher. And yeah, it's been really tough to watch Aaron Sanchez pitch the last month or so. Even longer than that, really, but I feel that if he's going to learn, he's got to learn against major league quality opponents because this is not a guy who's just not been a major league pitcher. He's had lots of success, and that's really the frustrating part about it is because we know that somewhere in that arm, and it may be pretty deep now, there is a stuff in that arm, and there's a guy who can throw the ball well and be not even a serviceable starting pitcher, but a really good all-star level starting pitcher, which he proved just a few years ago, and yeah, it seems like a distant memory now, but uh, I certainly don't agree with the, um, the idea and the, the prospect to move him down to AAA, and you mentioned how the opener strategy, uh, for first-time listeners, Mo and I are big fans of the opener, we've talked about this the last few episodes, we like the idea about how you bring in a guy to face the top third of the order so that your starter after, well, I shouldn't say starter, your reliever, your first reliever, who should be, who's technically your starter, is not facing the top of the order for the third time, which is really effective. It's proven really effective for the Rays the last few seasons. Uh, so I, it wouldn't hurt to try. And you mentioned the third time through the order is where it typically gets icky for Aaron Sanchez. Maybe eliminating that third time through the order in itself would certainly help. So uh, at this point in time, you're willing to try everything to salvage any sort of value you have for Aaron Sanchez, being that the plan at the beginning of the year at the deadline. You cut off at the last point. What did you say? Pardon me. Uh, oh, I just said that it's good to throw him out there and do whatever you can, salvage any sort of trade value you can for him. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, uh, I don't think there's a waiver deadline, is there, this year? Or I think they eliminated that. Nope, just one deadline, July 31st, no trades after that. Yeah, so Aaron Sanchez, it's not appearing likely that he will be traded this year. So he's going to have to rebuild his value in the winter and going to sort of go through there, um, especially with him being a Scott Boris client. It's not looking like the Jays will be able to extend him a contract or even negotiate with him during free agency. So hopefully next year he comes on has a solid year, bounces back, and hopefully for his sake and our sake, uh, he can be, move on to a better team, much like um, Hassan Whiteside, if any of you guys are basketball fans. All right, but before we get into the basketball talk, well, we won't get into basketball talk because it's a baseball podcast. Uh, one thing that was impressive about last night was Jake Wagaspak, as I mentioned. He came in, pitched five innings, gave up six hits, three runs, all earned, struck out four batters, and didn't have a single walk in the game. And while <clears throat> it's only the second big league appearance for Waggis back, certainly an impressive one considering the expectation. Obviously throwing a guy in there against an elite Red Sox slant, as we mentioned, he definitely held his own, and he got the win. Not like wins really matter, but he was able to shut down the Red Sox to an extent. And, I mean, with that start, you can't help but think that maybe he'll get more opportunities there down the road. And... You don't want to jump the gun too early. It's one start, but maybe if he, maybe the Bujis have something there if uh, he keeps pitching well. And don't forget, Wagaspec, I believe he was the guy that they got for Aaron Luke from the Phillies. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be a really nice piece if he's able to make it to anything. 
how what were your thoughts on Wagaspak's outing last night? I really like Wagaspak. I remember following him last year during after he was traded to Aug in August, um, down in Buffalo, just like watching the game days, just seeing how his starts went, just seeing how all the new guys went, and I've noticed that he's a big strikeout pitcher, and he can really dial up in the high strike zone, and batters, he has really high um, strike swinging percentage, and um, I just noticed how um, yesterday I was watching the game, and the game down in Tampa, and he just really looks composed out there, just a professional major league pitcher, um, and just the Jays have a lot of those guys, they can find these hidden gems down the major, um, down in Buffalo. Not the Ryan Fairbans of the world, but the Jacob Wagspacks of the world are certainly good. And he's, he certainly has to work on his walks down AAA Buffalo. But if he can turn into a high leverage reliever for the Blue Jays, that'd certainly be a pot of gold. He's got a nice frame as a pitcher, big tall guy, and he seems to work pretty quickly. I mentioned yesterday, I don't know if that's sort of a regular thing to expect from him, but I thought yesterday it was very, you know, seam ball, throw ball kind of thing. He didn't really mess around. He sort of just went up and attacked the hitters, and to his credit, he passed the test last night. Uh, anything else we should cover with the rotation before we start to go on to a little more fun things, such as all-star talk or the home run derby? Yeah, I was just like uh, looking at the Blue Jays' depth chart right now, just seeing all the Blue Jays' pitchers on DL, and just crazy how we still have Ryan Barucki on the DL, Clay Buckles, Luciano, Shoemaker, who was great for the Blue Jays. Even Edwin Jackson is doing a rehab start in Buffalo tonight. Then we have Ryan Tapera in the bullpen. So we do, we did, I should say, have some nice pitching for the Blue Jays. And coming to the year, Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro really wanted to focus on pitching. And sure, seems like that plan failed. Not, uh, not directly blaming them, but just blaming, um, not blaming anyone really. Just the health of the team and how things happen sometimes. And right now, our rotation is Stroman, Sanchez, Thornton, and Clayton Richard, and they certainly have. Try to hold their own, but with Stroman scuffling as of late with his shoulder, Sanchez not really having a great year right now. Thornton, he's been the bright spot of the rotation. Richard, he's serviceable out there. He's he's whatever you know. But when Stroman's gone, we really need to step up, and hopefully the young guys from Buffalo can come up there and show what they got. You you mentioned about all the guys on the DL. You can pretty much build a whole pitching staff with the amount of guys on the DL. It's just ridiculous. And I gotta be honest, like until about earlier today, I totally forgot Ryan Barucki existed. I mean, you hear rumors about him coming back, but it just at the beginning of the year it sounded like I mean, maybe I got the wrong impression, but it sounded like he was just gonna be gone for like the first few cycles of the rotation. Like I mean, we're almost at the deadline and he hasn't even made it his season debut yet. That's kind of weird. Yeah, I remember hearing on Twitter um, reports of, oh, Ryan Barucki will only be missing one start. Ryan Barucki should be here by the mid of April. Not one start, maybe two starts. He should be here by April, and then April went to May. And then in May went to end of May, and then May went to June. And now we're in July. Say with Don Pompey, who did go into some AAA, um, uh, not some AAA, some rehab action with the GCL Blue Jays yesterday. and went two for three with an RBI. So that's good to see Dalton back there, back from his third concussion, which is terrible. So hopefully Dalton can make an will impact. We, will, will we ever see Dalton in the majors again? I believe so, yeah. Well, you think he'll get September call up? Yeah, September call for sure. But they can't just stash him. Nice they can't stash him in the trip. They can't stash him in the minor leagues. He has no options. So he's basically got to ride out in the Gulf Coast League until September? <laughs> if that's what they want from him, man. Uh, well, hopefully uh, we do see a bit of him and, I guess, sort of a last chance, I guess, to say. He has some talent, no doubt year, about it. Yeah, man, he's got, he's got, he has all the tools that are really valuable for a team. You have a, a young, controllable outfielder. Well, I mean, not so much controllable now that he's out of options, but he's left, uh, left-handed, right? Not a switch hitter. I think he's a lefty. He I can't even remember. He's a switch hitter. Yeah. He's a good defender. He's got some speed. He's got some nice tools, unfortunately. He's got a little bit more than just some speed, buddy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we saw that firsthand in the playoffs. So he was just... Oh, yeah, the KC. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know my theory about Dalton Pompey. I think the problem with him was he sort of got caught between two regimes and that really hurt his development. 
You have Alex Anthopoulos, a guy who really seemed to believe in him. He brought him up all the way from below eight ball into the majors in one season. Then the next season, he became the starting center fielder after just a month of 